Danny, welcome to the biggest podcast. Woo! So this is really cool that we get to have this chat on your birthday. Indeed. So a happy birthday to you. How does it feel to be a year older? I'm struggling. <laughs> <laughs> your whole life is a struggle. <laughs> yes. Um, Amazing. Well, so listen, this is the biggest podcast. It's brought to you by One Bone. And, you know, this is a really exciting time for us because we have something that's going on currently that we're going to get to a little bit later. But I'd love for you to introduce yourself, let the people who are following One Bone know about who you are. Well, I'm Daniel Francesi. I am an actor, a comedian, and an activist and a leader in body positivity, and a plus-size male model. Oh, and some fat model. <laughs> <laughs> and gorgeous you are. So you have been on your Yas Amazing Tour, um, and how's that been going for you? Good. I'm, yeah, I'm, on my, I'm on my tour called Yas You're Amazing, and I've been touring colleges, um, clubs, and theaters for doing stand-up, and it's been really fun, and the response has been great. And I've been all over the world, and I can't wait to continue it. It's been really great. It's really epic because your whole vibe, everything that you do is just completely focused on positivity. And, you know, when we started One Bone and we were jumping into this whole body positivity movement, that was really an essential part for us because there's no time to be negative in this world. Like, there's just no time to... A, not love yourself, B, not love the people around you, and, and C, because of social media and stuff, there's no reason to express anything but positivity. So in expressing so much positivity, I'm sure there's some backlash that you receive every now and then from the haters. So does that affect you? Does that motivate you? How, how do you sort of take that on? I have very few haters. And when I do, it's like, I really ignore it because I think when you spend a life uh, doing things that are positive and doing things that help other people, um, the haters seem to fall off. They just can't get to you, yeah. you know? So it's really just like I have, a, I have just a great support system out there. People seem to really like what I'm putting out. So I don't, uh, when I when I get a hater, it's just like, okay, great. You know, moving on. That's your opinion. You know, I just it doesn't really affect me that much. Um, but I really do get fueled by the people – who are there in my corner. There's just like so many good people out there that have that have cheered me on. And it, it, it's outrageous, you know, uh, for a kid who, when I was a little kid, I used to think I was so alone, like to realizing how many people out there really do support my mission and support the things that I'm putting out there. It's, it's overwhelming. You know, it relates to sort of like, I, I, I've always had this feeling on like being the fat kid, let's call it, right? And, and I felt as though there was two ways of dealing with that you know, sort of making fun of yourself and being out there and like being the class clown, whatever it may be, or being really uncomfortable with yourself and being shy and being, and, and that as a result is led to being picked on. And that as a result is led to a way harder childhood and a harder adolescence. And I think with social media and people like you being out there in so many different ways, it allows for kids to really understand that it's not just, it's not just them, you know, it's not just them alone in the corner. Like you were saying, it's, it's, you're part of a community, you know? So as, as a kid growing up, were you the one who was like making fun of yourself or being made fun of? I just was sensitive. I think like, I probably didn't have it as bad as I felt like I did. I just, I was so sensitive to being different. Like society immediately tells you you're different. Like as your body's changing, you start, you know, especially when you're, I mean, I'm six, four and a big guy. So it's like, you know, on top of like my, as my body was changing, it was like, I couldn't sh shop for the clothes that were popular, you know, like, um, if I like urban outfitter wasn't around them, but if it was, it was like the kind of thing that I would struggle to try to find something to fit there, you know, yeah. and all the other kids would be wearing stuff from there. Or, you know, I'd outsize the t-shirts at Walmart, you know, that everybody got like the cool t-shirts at Target. And then I'd like be like struggling to try to find the one of my, you know, yeah. it was always like an issue of trying to find how to fit in with everyone else, real, not realizing what an individual I was, you know? So I think, um, 
that was the hardest part of the, the issue for me. So even when someone would be like, hey, big guy, or something like that, now things that I'm proud of, or I find pride in, or like a confidence boost because of, it used to make me cry, or I'd be like upset, and be like, why do they have to call me big? And like, I didn't understand why that was like my main identifier, you know? Um, people just assume that big dudes love to hear that kind of stuff. And to be honest with you, I do now. But like, I think growing up, I didn't, you know, uh, when I heard all that stuff, I was like, why are they pointing out my size right now? We're not even talking about that. And I didn't understand. Yeah. And I think the confusion of like, um, different sizes in different, like there's no universal size chart. So, you know, I could maybe be like a 38 in a pair of pants when I was like younger. And then like my mom would be like, oh my God, you went to a 40, you got to stop doing what you're doing. Meanwhile, my size never changed. Right. It was just a pair of pants that didn't fit, you know, and we just didn't understand that back in those days, you know, and it would be like something that would cause me a great deal of pressure and anxiety and frustration. And I think that certainly con contributed to how I felt, which is why um, I dedicate a lot of my time to uh, collaborating and finding ways to create clothing for bigger people, because I feel like, um, we're you know I, I, so excluded in the market constantly yeah. everything that you just said correlates to you know one bone's mission statement essentially because you know we we started off as one bone and we also referred to ourselves as the biggest brand like you may have seen under the little notch where it says one bone it says the biggest um, and so the whole point of that is like what you're saying is when you were younger and you were called the biggest it it really like it shot daggers at us, you know, like because we were so self-conscious about that kind of thing. But now that we're comfortable in who we are and we've, we've, to be honest, like made a bit of a living out of being the biggest in a certain capacity, like that is such a badge of honor that we wear now. And I think, again, correlating back to like the youth and like letting them come up in a world that is more body positive and way more, um, inclusive in the sense that like they just got to be who they are that's why we kind of wanted to take that power of the word the biggest and use it you know and and make people feel proud about being the biggest well it's also interesting how i've taken photos over the in, for throwback thursdays and like have put up pictures of myself where i felt the most unlovable and the most unattractive and the most different and then having fans be like, where were you when I was in high school? I totally would have went out with you. And I was like, really? Like, it's so crazy how we get brainwashed into thinking that we, we, we look a certain way and that we're unlovable and all these other things just because of our fit and clothing or just because of the media images that we're served all the time. And especially being someone who's gay, I mean, everything that is marketed to me comes with a side of abs. You know, if I want to, if, if it's like a gay auto body shop, it's like, hey, come get these tires. Look at that. <laughs> Look at you know, me. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, there's just nothing, you know, um, that is that is uh, made for us or served for us. So I constantly try to do things. I had a conversation in the DMs with this one guy who was like, you're so confident. You, uh, you always push uh, uh, photos of your shirt off and he's like it's something I could never do and I was like why I was like who's stopping you yeah. and you'd be so surprised I was like well, just when you feel like you don't look good in a photo when you post it that's the one that'll get the most response and you'll start to create a fan base that love you for you and it's funny because like just, just the day after I posted the shirtless picture and I got like some of the most likes I've gotten in a long time it's just interesting how you um, uh if you start celebrating the thing about yourself that you do not like, people all of a sudden fall in love with your audacity. It's like, it's, it's, um, I, I tell the students um, when I go to colleges, I do like an AMA after my um, show, and I tell them, I'm like, what is the reason that someone told you that you won't make it in your chosen field? You know, are you, um, are you too fat? Are you too short are you too tall are you too ethnic are you too gay are yeah. you too straight are you too whatever it is the thing that somebody told you is your roadblock like whatever it is that thing that told you that you couldn't do it is the thing that you need to learn how to harness pull down and monetize yeah because that thing is the thing that sets you apart from everyone it's the thing that makes you an individual it's the thing that makes you different and it truly is the thing that is going to set you apart so anything I've ever been made fun of for is something that makes me money today. A hundred percent. I mean, it's it's all about embracing your your uniqueness and especially 
again, in this huge social media world that's so saturated, it's only the authentic, it's only the natural that's going to cut through, you know? So that leads us to why we are sitting at the same table together on different coasts. Um, we embarked on this little collaboration, um, you know, so One Bone, we, we started nearly a year ago. It's been about 10 months and um, it's been an exceptional ride. And just like the, the feeling of being embraced by the big and tall community and being like, it like it's it honestly makes me feel amazing how how this community is so active and so verbal in in supporting and when you reached out it was like oh my god this is exactly what needs to happen right now so one bone clothing line danny just this beautiful boy who's making a whole lot of noise and we figured we had the perfect material to collaborate on a t-shirt with you and uh so we sent it your way and and what was your reaction the first time you got it you tried it on the uh one bone danny collab my reaction was good i love the fit i thought it was really comfortable and i love the, the fabric and everything um that we talked about for the shirt but when i started wearing it out that was when it was really impressive so many people immediately began uh, complimenting the fit and how it looked and everything else. And I ended up, you know, wearing it almost every day of that week. Like <laughs> when you get that new favorite item. Yeah. So uh, it's really cool uh, to see how not only I feel good in it, but how other people can have, react, have been reacting to it. Sure. And what were your struggles in terms of like finding clothing that fit on a regular basis before? I still think there's a struggle in that. I mean, I've always had to be like a little creative in my sourcing of things. You know, it's like a little bit online, a little bit at thrift stores, a little bit, you know, at DXL for, you know, it's like you have like, we have limited choices of where we can get stuff from. I mean, I'm like an ASOS queen too. Like, yeah. I'm like always just trying to find places. Um, every time I go to a different state, I hit up whatever the local big and tall shop is, like to see what's going on there. For you know? sure. And the same thing in different countries. I mean, like, going to the UK this year, I was able to go to, like, Giacomo and yeah. uh, High and Mighty and all these other places that had uh, different different stuff. Yeah. You know, I, I'm, I'm, as the internet grows, we're getting more access. Luckily, one bone's available, you know, yeah. uh, to, to everyone. So it's kind of like, you know, um, just creating access to things. I think um, that's one of the reasons I really wanted to collaborate with you guys, just to show... Um, people that this is another place you yeah. know, that you can get something from. And people always ask me what I'm wearing. I'm always tagging the things I'm wearing, sure. telling people where to get them. They're like, where'd you get that shirt? Where'd you get those pants? And I'm, I'm telling them, you know, constantly uh, giving them guides on where to find things. Yeah. So um, for me, it's really fun to make this more accessible because it is difficult on the daily to try to find stuff. For sure. It, it, the, the reason why we initially started it, I was touring and DJing and, First of all, the, the number one thing that I would always say while DJing is put your hands up in the air and every single time my gut was showing, you know, so like, so like that was the number one main concern. And not only that, but I had all these friends who were touring and the longer cuts and the scoop cuts were on trend at the time. And I was like, man, I'm not able to fit into any of this stuff. Like I would go to like a, a Zara and an H&M and put on a double XL and it literally fit like a medium, you know, like. So it became this huge problem where I was trying to find the right fit and I found that for big and tall men, we had two options. We could either look like a kid in kindergarten with like huge graphic tees and like, you know, that kind of thing or look like a retiree in Boca Raton with like a pink polo <laughs> and like chinos, you know. So, um, so that's why we embarked on this mission and honestly, it's been a great pleasure collaborating with you. And um, now at this point that the podcast will be out, there are literally only a few One Bone Danny collabs left. So um, if somebody is watching this and seeing the t-shirt, then you should definitely jump on that. And man, I just wish you just continued success and you should only continue to grow and grow and grow and just... Uh, be, thank to you. This be, has been so great. And 
I'm excited that it's selling so well, and I can't wait to make more and keep them going. <laughs> yeah, a hundred percent. And on that note, since we get the honor of speaking to you on your birthday, I, I, this is literally all I could find is like <laughs> a little like muffin. But I figured, why not wish you a little happy birthday? So, uh, you know, a, a public wish. What would be your you most public you? wish? You think you're cute, but like showing a fat kid a piece of cake you can't have is really messed <laughs> yeah, up. Yeah, I know. It's really it's screwed like, up right now. Really but you know what? Up. When I was when I was taking it out, I was like, oh, but that's amazing because I'm going to get to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? Yeah. So what would be your, your one public wish, I guess, in in everything you got going on and, and everyone who's following you? What would be that one wish that you could share? I wish for a little bit more peace of mind and acceptance within each other for the LGBTQ community um, and for everyone, really. But um, I, I wish uh, people should fight the real enemies and not the enemies that are our neighbors. Right. Is that is that a big struggle at the moment? I think so. Yeah, I think everyone's so angry everywhere that they're you know um, they're, they're fighting allies, and it's like I think we need to take a deep breath and yeah. like really just you know. Uh, look for the people that are at hand. That goes for the same thing with the uh, um, big and tall community. Support each other. Yeah. You know, bring everybody up, you know, because there's room for everybody. For sure. A hundred percent. And so now you can virtually blow it out. <laughs> oh, man. A West Coast to East Coast blowout. Amazing. And um, yeah, it's it's so true. It's 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 all about support. We have, we have people who reach out and I think they're hesitant at first, you know, I think they're hesitant because they're kind of like, Ooh, well you're technically our competition or whatever, but there's literally no competition in this space right now. It's all collaborative. It's all, let's just keep pushing this movement forward and anything that we can do as a company or as a personal brand or whatever to keep moving it forward, we're only going to help one another out, you know? I love it. You're a great guy, and I'm so happy to be working with you. Right back at you. And so uh, you can follow Danny on all social medias. It's at What's Up Danny on Instagram and Facebook, or Instagram, Twitter, Tumblr, BlackPeopleMeet.com, J Date, Farmers <laughs> Only, Christian Mingle, and Venmo. <laughs> Go get him! Uh, this is an absolute pleasure. It's been amazing working with you, and uh, hopefully, many more to come. <laughs>